This video has two goals. I want to give you my thoughts on the Matt Ryan trade and then my thoughts on Matt Ryan himself. So the Colts finally got their quarterback. After ridding themselves of rumored locker room cancer Carson Wentz, they've now added a former NFL MVP to an already talented roster. Somehow they got him for just a third round pick. And that gets even funnier when you consider that the Commanders pretty much paid double the price for Wentz, who is a decently worse quarterback than Ryan. This also marks the fifth straight year that the Colts have a new starting quarterback. Going back to Andrew Luck, Jacoby Brissett, Philip Rivers, Wentz, and now Ryan. The deal more or less had to be done Monday with the Falcons having to pay Ryan a $7.5 million roster bonus if he was still part of the team by 4pm. That bonus was supposed to be due on Friday, but the two sides agreed to put Push it to Monday with the Falcons going after Deshaun Watson. Once that happened, it became apparent that a divorce was due between Atlanta and their longtime franchise quarterback. It's a sad ending for Falcons fans, but uh, I guess they're used to sad endings. Matt Ryan was an all-time great for their franchise, and the team ended up burning that bridge while striking out on Watson. On top of that, they'll take on a dead cap hit for Ryan that's worth 19.5% of their cap. So basically, 20% of their cap is being designated to a player no longer on their team. And that will also be the largest dead cap hit in NFL history, which also means Ryan counts more against the Falcons cap than the Colts cap. If you're wondering, the Colts owe him an average of around $26 million for the next two years. Now, I'm, I'm a bit confused by what the Falcons have been trying to do these past couple of years. They thought they could contend like they were a rookie tight end away. Then they thought they could contend with Deshaun Watson, even though that would be putting them in a putting him in a very similar situation that he had in Houston in his final year, where the team lacked talent and could barely win any games. Then there were talks about a Matt Ryan extension, and now Ryan has been traded. I mean, is there any vision or plan whatsoever in Atlanta? It sounds like they're taking a different path for the future of the franchise every single day. And now that they've finally decided to blow it up, they only get a third rounder back for Matt Ryan? I guess on the bright side, they finally realized their roster wasn't capable and made the correct decision to blow things up. On the Colts side, they had to make a deal or make waves in the draft with Sam Ellinger as their QB1 post Carson Wentz trade. Now the Falcons would have been sitting in a similar position, but they quickly went ahead and reunited Marcus Mariota with Arthur Smith. I guess the question Colts fans should be asking themselves is just how good is Matt Ryan at age 36 going on 37? If you look at the simple stats, you'd see Ryan threw for the least amount of yards that he has in over a decade, and his touchdown total was one of the lowest in his career. But if you look at the Falcons roster, you'd see one of the worst rosters in the NFL. His number one receiver sat out most of the year and apparently gambled away another year of his career. He had a rookie tight end leading the team in yards. And I like Russell Gage, but he's certainly not a number one receiver. And after those two, well, there's not much else to write home about. From what I saw in Falcons games this year, yes, at times they struggled to move the ball down the field, but I found myself not criticizing Ryan and instead just feeling bad for him. That's the ultimate takeaway I had. There were receivers running the wrong route or giving up on plays. The offensive line had multiple holes in it. The team really did nothing to help Ryan except the surprise revival of a 30-year-old running back. It's honestly a shame that Ryan has developed a reputation of being a choker with his last moments on the biggest stage being the largest blown lead in Super Bowl history. But really, Ryan was the least of the Falcons' problems that day, and team management has failed to ever replicate a roster close to what they had there, so... Ryan has never been given much of a ch much of an opportunity to redeem himself. Even if he does start to decline in his late 30s, 
I would still expect solid quarterback play for a few years, and that's certainly worth the price of a third round pick. To be honest, I think he'll be better than solid and will make this trade look more and more like the fleecy I expect it to be. I think a change of scenery and winning more games will help revitalize his career as we wind down the final stretch. In my eyes, he's always been one of the more underrated players in the league. Even though he's older now, I think he can still prove that as being true. This shouldn't be like a one-year Philip Rivers rental, and it shouldn't fall apart like the Wentz experiment. Matt Ryan is like the polar opposite personality-wise from Wentz. Also, I gotta run my victory lap real quick for criticizing the Wentz trade last year. Eagles Wentz showed all the signs that things weren't going to go smoothly in Indy, and there's a good chance his tenure with the Commanders ends in a train wreck. Still, the Colts have some work to do if they want to pull off a Matt Stafford-esque move. Surrounding a veteran quarterback with the talent they've been lacking for years, that would start at the receiver position. They've got a bottom tier receiving core in the league. Michael Pittman has blossomed into a quality receiver, but they definitely need to add another target or two. Even though Julio Jones isn't close to what he used to be, you'd have to wonder if they'd consider pairing him back up with Ryan. Probably the smarter thing to do would be targeting a receiver in the second round of the draft. As we've seen recently, there's plenty of college receivers ready to make the hop from college to the NFL and be productive right away. And if Jonathan Taylor is able to perform close to what he did last year, then that can obviously help take a lot of pressure off Ryan. The Colts still have some cap space and they could create plenty more with some contract adjustments. Might as well add more to this team because you got a good quarterback on the clock and there's no guarantees on what the future brings. So if I'm running things, I'm doing everything I can to get a good receiver, tackle, and some help in the secondary. Also, one little side note for the ripple effect this trade has. I think the 49ers are getting put in a worse and worse situation every day. First, Russell Wilson gets sent to the Broncos, a potential suitor for Jimmy G. Then a QB opening is created in their own division where they wouldn't want to send Jimmy. Aaron Rodgers re-signs with the Packers. Tom Brady returns to the Bucks. Wentz to the Commanders. Then Watson goes to the Browns, putting Baker Mayfield on the market, and thus decreasing the value back in a Garoppolo trade. The Falcons happily sign Marcus Mariota to lead their rebuild efforts. The Saints run it back with Jameis Winston. Oh yeah, the Steelers put their faith in Mitch Trubisky and likely the draft. It suddenly seems like the Niners trade value has fallen apart with Matt Ryan getting dealt for a third. Lucky for them though, the league is low on this draft's crop of QBs, so maybe a team will be desperate enough and still give up some good picks. The most important part of this trade is Matt Ryan being undefeated against the Jaguars. That will come in handy week 18.